Hi, it's Ash here and this is the first video of the year, so um, Happy New Year and we're going to be making this tree so let's get to it shall we so first thing is I switch on screencast keys obviously so you can see what I'm doing then I'll go to first thing add a grease pencil and a blank then go into draw mode and set it to stroke and then I just I'll play with the settings these don't make much difference but we could use them once it's ready I go press numpad 1 to go to front view Five for orthographic and then I will just draw my pencil. Uh, the orthographic mode helps with 3D prints, just gives you a, an idea of sort of the angles that you're working with. Um, and then you just draw your tree. Try not to have any steep overhangs, use the grid as a reference for an angle of corner to corner would be 45 degrees and use numpad 4 or 6 just to rotate around and draw branches coming off in different directions. Once it's roughly sorted, just have a good look, see if it's sort of what you want. After that, and once it's ready, go to object and then convert to path select the, uh, the grease pencil layer and then we're going to add some geometry Once you have something with a bit of solidity, sort of roughly looking how you want, we're going to go into edit mode very shortly. Tab into edit mode, turn on proportional editing, and then we use Alt and S to uh, scale the vertices. a nice branch look sort of narrowing off towards the ends if you want you can turn it onto connected only that means it'll only it'll only change the vertices which are directly attached to the one that you have got and do it proportionally from that point. Once you have something like you want, we're going to um, object and then convert to mesh again. And at this point, I will do my old add a remesh modifier. This gives it a bit more of an organic look and uh, makes it into one solid mesh. And then we'll be doing some very basic sculpting on it. I just use the sculpting tab but uh, and then I forget to turn on the screencast keys but I'll try and uh, remember to tell you what hotkeys I use. I mostly just use the clay stripe brush, it gives a nice texture um, in the settings, turn on front face only so you don't accidentally sort of take away from the faces that you can't see on the other side of the model. Turn on dynamic topology and drop the pixel size to something you find comfortable. I find three is kind of optimum for my, my setup. I 
and then yeah you just sculpt away try and get something that looks a bit like bark you hold down shift while sculpting it will uh, cut away from the model rather than add to it and all the sculpting I'm doing here is being done with a mouse rather than the tablet just to show you that it's not difficult to sculpt with a mouse either you don't need any special equipment or anything details, look at reference of trees if you need to Just try and get something that looks roughly right I mean when you print it you're probably going to it's going to be scaled down quite a lot and uh, I'm sort of more going for the impression of a lot of the things when I print them I add details with textured paints and things to sort of give them more of a dynamic look. If you want to add extra branches use the snake hook brush uh, with the hotkey K. Just sort of drag it up, play with it. And then I think I'm going to just speed things up for this last bit of sculpting, which you should, should have the idea by now. And that's the sculpting done for now. So next thing to do is with the uh, extra, the add-on um, extra meshes. You can add. There's a rock generator. You can use that to make some simple rocks. I'm just going to add one to start with to get a rough size. Then I'm going to add a base, just a, a simple cylinder, sort of rotated and scaled. S and Z to scale on the Z axis, S and Shift Z and it scales it on everything except the Z axis. Move it into position, press 3 and turn off proportional editing and then 3 choose, selects the face mode and sort of make it the base look roughly how you want it. Now 
I'm going to add a few more rocks in the, uh, the drop down you can just select a number and see how many of them turn out to be usable. I'm going to position these, any that I like, around the bottom of the tree and get rid of any that I don't like. leave it there if that's what you're after, but there's an extra detail that I feel is missing. And that extra detail is the roots. Now at this point I'm just going to save it. Um, I should probably have saved much earlier, but you know, save as you go, remember that. I'm going to sculpt the roots on, purely using mostly the snake hook. dragging out. Dynamic topology should still be enabled, so you just grab around the base of the tree. Don't read too much about things going off at wrong tangents at this point. We'll be fixing that shortly. I'll probably fix it straight away. Yep. Um, G is the hotkey for the grab brush. It's kind of similar but with less distortion on the uh, mesh. So you can use that just to pull everything downwards into the ground. Just like before, just keep on sculpting until you're happy with the result. You can always remember if you muck up while sculpting it's absolutely fine, Control and Z is always the undo, as in with most software, so that's not difficult to remember. Once again, this was all done with a mouse. I just changed a few settings there to make things sort of a bit easier to see. Turn on random colour in the viewport, so it makes things uh, just makes me a bit happier working with the different objects.
once you're sort of happy, there you go. That's more or less it for the uh, the main body. It. I'm not. I'm going to cheat a bit here. I mean, normally I would either boolean everything together or remesh it all into one thing, but I'm just not going to bother. I'm going to export it as a select everything and export it all as an STL. Lumpy underside and all. This is poor practice for models if you're going to sell them, but there is a workaround in slicing software, which is what I'm going to do. And here we are in the slicer. Now, I didn't properly set Blender up, so uh, the model's very small, but it's a tree. The scale is relative. So what I'm going to do to get around the lumpy underside is once I've got the tree to be the size I want it, is to drop the model below the print bed, as you'll see in a second. Where the red line overlaps, it's just going to slice that off as a nice flat underside. And it prints surprisingly well. I've only got a small FDM printer at the moment. But even so, the details came out reasonably well. I checked for supports. It kind of thinks I need two there, which is pretty good going for some of my models. There's very little... Uh, that was the point of making it very upright. So yeah, and that's everything. Hope this is alright and uh, let me know what you think and if, especially if you make something. Thanks again and see you soon.